the development of humanity appears to have always been intertwined with grasping the fire, both mentally and physically. On this road, humanity wrought many great wonders throughout the long history of its self-development. Some of the wonders stand as giant structures that still puzzle us today. How were they built? What were they built for? In asking these questions, some of the ancient structures that we marvel at ironically also come to light to serve as links to the future. They give us a hint of what the ancient builders may have seen in the sky, which can no longer be seen, because the modern age unfolds in an electrically collapsing solar environment that is trending towards its impending solar cutoff point. The builders of the pyramids may have experienced both of the solar extremes, the more brilliant sun than we have today and the inactive sun that would have created the Younger Dryas period of the renewed glaciation in which researchers suggest that the Giza pyramids have been built. Contrary to assertions by Egyptology, the Giza pyramids were likely built 12,800 years ago, and not as tombs for which they were later used. The distant time is derived by running the astrophysical clock backwards until a point is reached at which the Sphinx of the Giza complex is seeing its own image in the sky on a solstice sunrise. The successed date seems to be confirmed by the complete absence of inscriptions inside the pyramids. Inscriptions became customary later, during the time of the pharaohs. Numerous other features likewise placed the Giza pyramid far outside the time frame of the pharaohs. One of these features is the quality of their design and the precision in construction. These place the Giza complex distinctly into a category of its own that nothing which the Egyptians had produced and had been capable of at the time comes even close to. Assuming that the pyramids were built 12,800 years before the present, which is the most reasonable estimate to date, what would have been the motive for the people at this time to build the giant structures that they built? It appears that the motive may have been religious in a sense, while it was built around astrophysical phenomena. During the great global warming period, 2,000 years previous to the building of the pyramids, a very large Danska Ishko event broke the deep chill of the last ice age. At this time, when the sun became extremely active, the people may have seen, with their naked eye, the plasma images of the primal fields in action centered on the sun. The type of image that we see today in the Red Square Nebula may have been seen bright and clear in the ancient skies. The full image may have been seen in the time of a solar eclipse, while a part of the image may have been blazing in the night skies from dusk to dawn. The people may have seen in the sky two pyramid shapes of light, with the sun between them. On this basis, the sun may have become an object of worship, the giver of abundant life resting on a pyramid. Then, suddenly, the sun becomes inactive again. The idea must have emerged at this time to build a pyramid for the sun, a house for the gods, provided on the earth. 
When a thousand years later the sun became brilliant once more, and soon thereafter went inactive again. A deep crisis may have erupted that inspired the building of the greatest pyramid of all times to entice the sun god to restore its shiny face for his people. The people may have also seen among the plasma images in the sky, perhaps right at the center of them, the famous three stars of the belt of the constellation Orion. These three stars appear to have determined the positions of the pyramids, their alignment to each other, and their relative size. When the Great Pyramid Building's project was launched, it appears that the ancients did not build just one pyramid to inspire the gods, but have built all three pyramids together as a single project, with each pyramid being exactly aligned and proportioned in accord with the three stars of the belt of Orion. In this manner, the pyramids of Giza stand for us as a silent testimony that the brilliance of the sun is not a permanent feature, but is a fleeting phenomenon at times, which once had inspired a monumental response by a nation to get the shiny face of the sun back. The pyramids also tell us another significant story. The evident fact that the Giza project was built 12,800 years ago is important, as it tells us that the region in which it was built was biologically sufficiently strong to support a large population. Giza is located near Cairo, on the 30 degree latitude in the northern part of the Sahara. Petroglyphs indicate that the Sahara was a lush region before it became drowned in sand, perhaps by a swarm of comet fragments that became electrically fractured into sand while strafing the ionosphere or even the atmosphere in an event that no one lived to tell about. Since the Sahara was lush before this time and supported the civilization during the times of the inactive sun, the northern boundary of the Sahara appears to be also the northern boundary of the Ice Age safe zone, coinciding with the 35 degree latitude. The safe line stretches across California in the USA, north of Los Angeles, and from there through the middle of the Mediterranean Sea and into the east, it cuts through the middle of China near Liangchuang and through Japan south of Tokyo. Anything north of that, typically along the 40 degree line from Beijing to Madrid, to Philadelphia was permafrost country during the last ice age. This means that large portions of the earth become difficult, if not impossible, to live in during the solar inactive times. This includes primarily Russia, China, Canada, the USA and Europe which share a common problem and thereby are natural partners for building the required solution. If a solution requires to place agriculture onto the sea, since land is scarce in the tropical areas, a perfect zone exists for doing this right along the equator. A narrow zone exists along the equator that is free of hurricanes. Placing agriculture onto floating modules there, made out of basalt 
and produce the nuclear-powered automated industrial processes is probably more easily accomplished than greening the Sahara in laborious manual operations. The same is evidently also true for the automated production of complete house as a necessary and free infrastructure to mobilize our humanity. Some protests may be heard here that this is too hard to do. If the people of a small culture as far back as 12,800 years ago were able to mobilize the economic resources to cut four million stone blocks out of the bedrock, weighing several tons each, transport them to the building site, and to place them with precision on a structure with a steep slope reaching 480 feet into the sky. In comparison with that, the building of bridges across the oceans with floating agriculture attached in floating pre-manufactured houses and cities is small stuff in considering the power of high-temperature automated industrial processes that we now have motivated by nuclear power. A single gigawatt plant, for example, should be able to produce 2,000 housing units an hour. We can have a whole new world coming online on this basis with comparatively little effort. No one needs to starve or perish when the sun becomes inactive. That's what the pyramids are telling us. This means that the future of Canada, Russia and Europe is logically located on the sea along the equator, and to a lesser degree, the future of China and the USA too. It also means that we better get busy soon to transform our world. Another large construction project from ancient times tells us a similar story. The Stonehenge project, like the pyramid building project, reflects features that the ancient builders must have seen in the sky, as the features that were constructed replicate critical aspects of high-powered plasma physics that were only recently discovered in laboratory experiments. The Stonehenge monument features a ring of 56 chalk pits, a meter wide and three quarters of a meter deep, named the Arbory Holes, in honor of the discoverer of them. Their purpose remains a puzzle, unless one connects them with the sky. It was discovered in a lab experiment published in 2003 that a solid beam of charged particles tends to form hollow cylinders that may then filament into individual currents. When observed from below, the pattern consists of circles, circular rings of bright spots, and intense electric discharge stream was connecting the inner structure to the outer structure. The maximum number of the filaments has been found to be 56. Another experiment shows that the concentrated plasma that flows between the two complementary bold structures of the primer fields forms a ring of 56 distinct plasma filaments, which in the real world, under extreme conditions, appear to have been visible in the sky. It has been noted that over long distances, the filaments merge into groups of two or three, as can be seen in this image of the supernova 1987A. This image shown here is giving us a cross-section view 
of a strong Birkeland current flowing in space. In another experiment, a more perfect cross-section image of a very high-powered plasma stream has been recorded that shows the structure of the 56 plasma filaments self-aligned into a circle and streamers flowing into other circles and so on. It is surprising to note how close the layout of the Stonehenge monument built so long ago matches the plasma flow pattern that became visible only recently in experiments produced in the laboratory. The surprising similarity that we find in these two cases suggests that the plasma flow pattern that had been seen in the sky in ancient times, probably seven or eight thousand years ago, in times when the interglacial sun was at its peak power level. The pattern that was seen then, which was replicated in the monument, would have been the outflow pattern of the concentrated plasma that was at a time visibly focused onto the sun. That we no longer see these types of patterns is the natural consequence of the weak plasma environment of today. There is simply not enough density left remaining for any of the plasma features forged by the primal fields to be still visible. Soon the primal fields themselves will collapse and the sun become inactive again for long intervals, as it had been during the previous long ice age period. <laughs>